There's a war on for your individuality, folks. It's brutal. People competing to see who is the best. The taboo of working together. And worst of all, the Twitters. Don't get me started on the Twitters. Welcome to the problem. Let's talk about individualism. Hoorah! I was going to make a different video, but I felt like the problem became the depressing video, and uh, so I think it might be best to start with Alfie Cohn, the author of No Contest, The Case Against Competition. When it comes to competition, we Americans typically recognize only two legitimate positions, enthusiastic support and qualified support. He continues on to suggest that in current, in current society, we encourage and lionize competition while demonizing the increasing evidence in favor of cooperation as the most productive mode of education, work, and provision. That may sound extreme, if not downright un-American, but some things aren't just bad because they're done to excess. Some things are inherently destructive. A competition which simply means that one person can succeed only if others fail. Uh, is one of those things. I'm sure y'all have been losers at one competition or another. Most people lose in most competitive encounters, and it's obvious why that causes self-doubt. But even winning doesn't build character just kind of lets someone gloat temporarily. Studies have shown that feelings of self-worth became dependent on external sources of evaluation as a result of competition. Your value is defined by what you've done. Worse, you're a good person in proportion to the number of people you've beaten. Now, this is what I mean by lionizing competition. We praise people who have beaten every other person in their field, gained their success by climbing ladders made of daggers stabbed into the backs of colleagues and friends alike, made enemies of their allies, allies of their enemies, burned all of their bridges and salted the earth beneath them. That doesn't really sound too healthy. Uh, cooperation, on the other hand, is marvelously successful at helping people to communicate effectively, to trust in others, and to accept uh, those who are different from you. Competition interferes with these goals and often results in outright antisocial behavior. The choice is ours. We can blame the individuals who uh, cheat, turn violent, or withdraw, or we can face the fact that competition itself is responsible for such ugliness. Competitive groups are much less likely to succeed as a whole than uh, collaborative groups. Uh, think about it. If you had a class assignment, 
would you be more likely to get all of the answers correct if you work together or if you work strictly apart? Research shows the work together choice to be correct, unsurprisingly. You might think, well, yeah, but that's cheating. So why is working together so much better to the point that it's considered cheating? Also, it's something that comes to us naturally. We kind of can't help but cooperate. In a study by uh, Isartel, Marin, and Kadopi in 2006, uh, participants were incapable of resisting automimicry, the phenomenon described as a group's innate and automatic copying and synchronizing of actions. Not that all of that is good, of course, but when uh, utilized properly, it can turn a group of strangers into a superorganism known as a group or cadre. The uh, effect seems to be strengthened by those sharing similar goals, and especially within groups that are accepting of others regardless of who or what they are. Which brings me to the elephant in the room. So let's talk about my framework uh, some more. I have stated that I use a holistic framework here. I try to make all the right connections. I uh, advocate for action that goes beyond the individual. I advocate for the power of groups. I dance around unionize, but I can't say collectivize without people coming back with, but my individuality, my identity, and... Uh. Nailed it. There's a difference between individuality and individualism. Between a collective reality where you are accepted as you are by everyone around you and an individualized reality where everyone is the other. A possible threat. A philosophical zombie. Uh, an NPC. Not even human. Just some alien. A hollow reality where even subjective truth is meaningless in favor of a constantly correct customized cardboard cutout consumable counterfeit class consciousness. A, uh, cons a consumer identity as it is frequently known. Uh, demographic. Yet Whenever I see anything about collectivism in uh, American pop culture, it's some individualist hive mind scaremongering nonsense like Me too. Oh no, the spooky collectivist is going to change your values and views. They're going to turn you into them. We are born. You will be assimilated. And then you're gonna lose your identity. In reality, uh, this is basically what that looks like to Hollists like myself and collectivists alike. Hey! Hey Karen! I heard you were good at drums. You wanna Come play drums with us. Nice try, collectivist. I know your Soros-funded agenda is to keep me from playing my instrument alone with nobody to listen or help me get better. Checkmate, commie. Okay. 
perplexing flexing, but okay. Good luck, Lone Wanderer. Because it legitimately just means, like, working together instead of competing over every goddamn thing. Uh, collective action. Uh, individual identity. Individual action. Uh, anonymous identity. And with neoliberal hierarchies, we are encouraged to indulge in this alienation from self. We have to sell our expression just to get by. As put by Michael Pierce, sports editor for the Fenton High School publication, Fenton in Print. Listen to kids, man. They're the ones who are going to have to live here when you're gone. People spend hours on their phones, taking selfie after selfie, searching for one that will receive the most comments and likes. Feeling good about yourself is not the problem. There is nothing wrong with taking a good picture of yourself. The problem here is the value that a like contains. What does a like actually mean? Absolutely nothing. A like is just a number on a picture that increases when someone else double taps it. It is literally worthless. Basing self-worth off Instagram likes is not productive and actually lowers your opinion of yourself. Everyone in the world is more than the number of likes they receive. If you follow more people than follow you, you are not less of a person. It does not look bad. Social media has no rule book. When we idealize the self instead of accepting it uh, as a given, we lose out on self-expression that isn't marketable, that won't get us the most likes, the most clout, the most followers, the most social capital. We have marketized the self and given worth to ourselves by way of market forces, and this vilifies non-standard behavior. Are you a beat poet in the 21st century? Excellent, cool. I may not come to watch you perform, but you shouldn't force yourself to value mass appeal and album sales over your liberty of expression. If you're doing what you want to do, why should you ask the world around you if what you're doing is worthy of fame fortune. Have you ever been in a group and contributed a meme you made? For free? Why? Time is money. You should be making stuff for fame, for wealth, for glory. Put a watermark on it. Get those likes, those comments, those followers, those subscribers, that dough. That doesn't seem right. Making memes for shiggles is not a bad thing to do. It doesn't matter where you are on the political spectrum. You do this for a group, for a collective, for the joy of yourself and others alike. Trying to commodify that expression, that communication of shared experience feels like viscerally wrong. Like when we see an artist we like in an advertisement. And we feel betrayed. And we feel like their expression is fake. I'm an individual. But the inevitable result of marketizing any expression is selling out. The artist who made the song in my intro and that ad has two notable songs across two albums. The only ones with popularity are the ones in commercials. And that's probably how the artist can keep making the music they love to make. 
you have to marketize your expression because otherwise you starve. In a market society, you're encouraged to give up your individuality for money. Either you sell out, you die in obscurity. Oh, I made a depressing video again, didn't I? You shouldn't be forced to choose between starving while being yourself and surviving by being a puppet master, uh, controlling your own image less as an authentic expression of self and more as a brand, a marketing object, interchangeable with a corporate mascot in every single way. Individualist societies don't want us to know that we are human and humans are social animals. We work best in groups and we're happiest in communities. Contributing to society is essentially a given when society welcomes you with open arms. Cooperating and collaborating instead of competing is the best way forward, not just on a social level, but on a technological and societal progress level. If you want your identity back, dear viewers, you're going to have to fight for it. Is it still depressing? I tried. I'd appreciate feedback, and I'd appreciate comments, though I will remove abuse. Uh, Biblio and Patreon are in the description. I have been Luna, and I am a hypocrite. Bye! So, instead of a joke, I'd like to send y'all to some further reading on this topic from a couple videos that came out while I was working on this one. The first one is by Jack Saint, and it covers some of the nastiest individualistic media on TV, and another from Suck My Opinion on the whole topic of time is money. Y'all should subscribe to these folks, but especially Suck My Opinion. Gotta spread the love for my fellow Southerners out here on the internet. Fireworks, great. Hell yeah, America.